Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a mid-session update for Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. I'm um, going to go over the same items I went over yesterday, although I did realize um, uh, afterwards that I left out natural gas. I skipped over that, so I'll do an update there. So here's what we're going to do. A very, very quick update on the equity markets, roll into natural gas, and um, everything else. You know, I covered sugar. I'll step away from that because that, there's no updates there, uh, so we'll do another update crude, the euro, silver, gold, uh, cocoa, which I laid out uh, as a new trade idea yesterday, and then the uh, five-year treasury note, which I'm focused on. All right, starting out here, this is QQQ. There is that uh, trend line, just a beautiful trend line. Now, when I say beautiful, because there's just a lot of reactions, and uh, it is a nice, clean, bearish rising wedge. I've seen a lot of these. They're, you know, some of my favorite patterns of trade, and uh, you need to, to throw in a sell signal. Now, I'll tell you, this one looks ready to pop. There are no guarantees in trading. Just because you have a bullish or bearish chart formation doesn't guarantee it'll play out. But... Uh, like I said, it looks about as clean as it gets, and uh, there's that marginal new high I talked about as well. You can see, well, that's not it, and here's the line right there. There's our old high, and again, for a long time, that's been the MO of the markets. Popped the previous highs from, you know, whether it was a few weeks or a few months ago, uh, and then uh, correct after that point. So that's it. Uh, we're from that old high, we're you know, certainly only a marginal new high percentage-wise. It's about 1%, one, 1.5%. One so that's it. Uh, sell signal pending a break of the trend line. And again, ideally an impulsive break. A uh, solid 60-minute close below there is, I like to say, the redder the better. So we'll see. No sell signal yet, but that's what we're looking for. All right, on to the small caps. Nothing much else there to report. You know what? I've been looking at the futures lately, so let me go to that chart. Uh, that one did break out, and it did burn through the divergence. So I have to acknowledge that. Let me show you real quick what I'm talking about. Uh, this is the two-hour candlestick chart, meaning 120-minute uh, candles. Uh, six months of history showed you all the divergent highs and the corrections that follow divergent high one divergent high two correction divergent high correction divergent high correction divergent high and then we had that there and we got a correction it was a tradable correction we hit my first target uh, to the button that was 2248 that horizontal line there you hit it and uh, buyers stepped in pretty aggressively now what they did by doing that is they did take out well, again, once again, the divergence played out there. It was a quick trade if you took profits at the first target and covered and it went long. Well, congrats for you. Uh, I still think we're going to come down and hit at least that trend line and, and more likely go back to the bottom of the trading range. But, uh, you know, it's not ideal to see the divergence taken out. What I mean by that, you had a high, a peak here on the PPO, and now you have a higher peak. Uh, but what I did do, let me show you, we still have, first of all, I want to say this, we do have the RSI divergence. We've made an equal high in the RSI versus higher high in price. That is negative divergence right there. Uh, the other thing to note is, uh, well, number one, you know, we broke out, we had three reaction highs right there at this level right here where the horizontal line is 22 uh, 2341 and then we broke out and today we back tested so it is a breakout and uh, that's bullish until and unless it fails I talk about that quite often you know breakouts a breakout you know support is support until and unless broken that kind of thing and uh, once you break resistance it becomes support so that's what that is a breakout and a back test uh, we haven't really moved off there yet However, again, this breakout may fail. You have the negative divergence on the uh, RSI. And what I did since the uh, last chart I showed you, I put some um, uh, overbought levels. And I always like to use my own levels. You know, a default on most charting platforms will give you 70 on the RSI. Well, as you can see here, 70 is down right about here. Well, you know, IW or RTY, the small cap futures, hit that all the time and they often exceed it. So where's the extreme? We're going back six months. I put the line at 81.70, about 81.70 we'll call it. And you know, you can see what happens when you get there. You don't always immediately fall, but you don't go any higher. We hit it there and we never exceeded that point after that initial tag right there. Uh, we hit it again here. Uh, and this time we almost touched it there and started to diverge. So I will say it didn't mark a top, but a top came shortly thereafter, right? There's where you hit it, tapped it again, and then boom, the top came in there. Uh, fell a little shy there. And again, I was going off these divergences before. 
Uh, just want to say we hit it here and we had a pretty healthy correction, nothing huge, but a nice pullback and we just hit it again there. So we're very overbought. Uh, overbought in itself is not a sell signal. Uh, one of two things here. We're either going to hold this back test um, and if we do watch for uh, the next divergence to set up right here. Otherwise, if the back test fails, I'm talking the back test of the breakout 2341, uh, that would be bearish and could be the catalyst for a move down to that trend line, which now comes in right with the uh, 2248 level. So remember before the trend line was well below there. So you hit the first support, bounced, buyer stepped in again pretty aggressively, but that's the nature of IWM. You see the first wave down on this correction, they went up. Uh, that was either a marginal new high ever so slightly or equal. It was actually ever so slightly. It was slightly higher. And so maybe that's what this is right here. You know, the breakdown, snapback rally with another leg down to come. And uh, being the fact we've already hit it once right there, maybe a reaction. But if uh, if whether we get a reaction or not, let me just say this clearly and they'll move on. Uh, if we come down there, that would still be the next target. Once again, the trend line now in the 20, uh, 2248 level and a break below that, solid break below it, ideally after a little reaction off the level again, uh, would open the door for another move down, probably down here around these previous spike reaction lows. Uh, all the way down to about 2100 on IWM. So uh, watch that. Watch the large caps. I showed you QQQ, and um, those, that's what I'll be looking for. Uh, uh, break da back down below 2340 and a breakdown in uh, QQQ and NQ, the NASDAQ 100 futures. Okay, here's NG. And my again, my apologies. I didn't realize that today until today. I was going through there. I had to add the symbol tags. I had to uh, shoot out for an appointment yesterday and got that post out and left my desk and came back and adding all the tags. I realized that's when I realized I forgot to put in natural gas. All right, so what happened there is we have that head and shoulders pattern is now fully formed. Remember, I talked about that recently, and you can see I removed the question marks. Uh, I even did that before the video yesterday. I forgot to cover it. LS, left shoulder, head right there, RS, right shoulder, and this, of course, is your neckline right here, this line here. And as I mentioned before, that neckline comes in perfectly with the primary uptrend line here on this uh, 120 minute chart. That uptrend line comes all the way back from early May right there. Uh, about mid May, I'm sorry, mid May or so. All right, so we hit it to the butt. And as expected, remember, this was the initial pullback. There's that impulsive leg down. Remember, the last update was right here. And I had a question mark by the, all these because it was only potential head and shoulders. Now you have a confirmed pattern. We had exactly what I wanted to see for that uh, an impulsive leg down. And, you know, rarely you're just going to go on you know, after such a big drop and just keep going. So we hit uh, dual support levels, both the neckline of the pattern as well as the primary more significant uptrend line. I put a higher weighting on this trend line because it's longer in duration. You have a lot of reactions on it, including this one here. So that's it now. It's very simple. We'll come on down. We bounced, which is usually what you're going to get on the after the right shoulder comes down and forms. And uh, we bounce up to where I, I think it's objective. You know, I mentioned playing these head and shoulders. Sometimes I'll take a partial position uh, near the top of what appears to be a right shoulder with a stop somewhat above because if it goes much higher, it's going to take out the head or, you know, take out the symmetry of the pattern and that ruins it. And so you could have swung that down. And now your next. Um, you know, add on or a full position will come on a break of the uh, neckline and again the trend line you want to give it the benefit of the doubt wait for, they come in together so one breaks if it happens soon they're both going to break together this is still the measured target remember i took the widest part from the head down to the neckline and it comes right down to that four dollar level and that's still where i think we're going to go however this, like any other pattern, it's a inherently bearish pattern. Uh, head and shoulders is a topping pattern. Uh, it is a uh, pattern that uh, needs to trigger an entry, and the entry comes again on the break of the neckline. So uh, there's no sell signal right now. If anything else, we had a pullback to support. But uh, you can make an objective case to short it here. Again, depending on where you're at, whether you have a position, whether you don't, whether you're aggressive, I consider myself what I call uh, often an anticipatory trader. I'll anticipate 
a bullish or a bearish breakout before it even happens. Most traders wait for that breakout. And um, so if you think this thing will break down, then uh, you could take a shot here for sure, put a relatively tight stop, or you can play the safe game and wait for a breakdown of the pattern or, or that uh, 4,992 uh, support level just below. And, um, you know, it's all about risk reward. If you're talking, you know, looking for that 20, what is that, 24 uh, percent or so drop from the neckline, which would be even higher from where we're at, then yeah, a stop of, uh, you know, a few percentage points. When I say tight stop, don't run a half percent or one percent or even a two percent stop on natural gas. It's too volatile. They're going to take you out. You're swinging from here. You'd be looking at about a 30 percent or better drop. And so using a good five to one risk reward ratio, you know, or I'm sorry, a good three to one risk reward ratio, you could allow a 10 percent stop and still be in that three to one RR um, ratio there. And then at the very same time, remember that trend line I have on the 120 minute chart of natural gas futures I just showed you is also the same primary uptrend line here on the daily chart. And that's even more significant. And that's what we hit. We hit it a week or so ago, bounced as expected, and we hit it again. Uh, so we need to take that out and a fall back, move back below that uh, uh, this previous reaction high right here. And uh, that should open the door for a deeper correction in natural gas, uh, something along these lines. All right, so that's it. Nat gas, head and shoulders formed, waiting for a sell signal on an impulsive break down below. All right, let's move on a little faster here. We'll pick it up with crude oil. I like to cover that usually when I cover nat gas. And no change there, but um, it continues to respect this trend line. So every additional tag helps to validate it that's how i look at trading you know i use a minimum of three tags to to validate a trend line because any two points can be connected at random but then the more points you have the more valid that trend line is the more eyes are going to be watching it and although there are no guarantees it just means the more likely that a solid breakdown below there uh will uh lead to more selling and, and bring in sellers and also have longs uh, stop out. So that's it. The technical posture has not changed. These divergences that started back there continue to build. That's a divergent high. Should it rally off the trend line again anytime soon, it's still going to have divergence. It would have to take out this trend line. It would have to move up here somewhere to take out those divergences. But right now, uh, the divergences are starting to steepen. That shows waning momentum in the uh, crude trade, you know, strong here. But when you have divergence, that's what it's all about. It just shows a trend is is starting to uh, uh, the momentum is shifting. Just like you had a correction here, it was impulsive, starts to shift. You get the positive divergence and there was a bottom in crude. And here's a quick update on the euro. Nothing much uh, since yesterday's update. There is our last wedge. There was the breakout, the rally. We put in uh, divergence there, at least on the RSI. You know, big divergence, big correction there. After that, small divergence right there. So see these, even these little, you know, that's why I always talk about typically, but not always, the scope of the move is usually relative or somewhat commensurate with the uh, scope of the divergence. And little divergence equals bigger rallies or bigger corrections, but not always. Again, it's there's no hard set rule all I can tell you is right now, looking at this, we still have support down here, a pretty important support level, about 115.45 on the euro. And um, we've had a couple successful tests, as well as this one, where I mentioned as a long right here, the yesterday, uh, day before yesterday. And we rallied up and they're pulling back. So I don't, near term, mm, I don't know. It's not, I'm not crazy about the fact that it couldn't hold 116 right there when it regained it after it popped it. We're a little below it now. So let me just say I'm neutral at this point in time on uh, near term, very near term neutral, but intermediate term still bullish. Uh, would really, really like to see this level hold. Uh, let's look at what the charts might look like if it doesn't. Uh, we're gonna, if we pop down through there, uh, we're gonna extend the divergence that at least here on the RSI and we'll probably have a new smaller divergence there on the PPO. We'll just, we'll, we'll Take this one day by day, minute by minute. I'll, I'll give you an update if I see anything big. And because of this pullback in the euro today, then gold and, and silver pulled back. And remember, I mentioned that they broke down. And like I said yesterday, although I suspect this will prove to be a false breakdown, 
uh, and I cannot reiterate this, the importance of the snuff. A breakdown is a breakdown in toll and unless it, it, it fails, meaning the, uh, the, they can recover. In this case, it's gold. Sorry, guys, I jumped over to the gold. One 20-minute chart, six-month period. And there's that primary trend line. That was our most recent divergent high. So there's the breakdown. Uh, so far, we did get a snap back real quick, and we back tested. So the technicals are playing out um, you know, as they should. It just shows you a lot of traders are watching these levels. I mean, that's not random. You had the most impulsive drop right there in a while, and it coincided with a break of the trend line, followed by a kickback rally, and so that's it. So ideally, you want to see uh, gold take back this trend line. And then even better, if it can pop solidly above that 1810-ish level right there, should bring us up to my uh, next target, about 1838. And then again, a breakout above that would be quite bullish because we've had a lot of big reactions there in the past few months. So that's what gold looks like. Um, but don't fall in love with it because right now you're looking at, if you take this for what it is, divergent high in a larger kind of choppy trading range. We put in divergence there and a breakdown and a back test. So I'll just say it. I mean, a case can be made for an objective short entry on gold right here. Or if you got caught in this and you don't like it, maybe your position size is too big for your comfort level, you kick back, you know, rally back to resistance. That's usually where trapped buyers will sell on a rally back into resistance. And that's where short sellers, if they didn't take the breakdown, they will short a back test. Like I said, I'm leaning towards this, this proving to be a false breakdown in recovering that level, but there's work to be done. Um, I can't tell you that with 100% confidence, but but that's where I that's what I favor, and I put it over. You know, when I favor it, obviously that means over 50%, but it's certainly not 90%. All right, SI, silver. Silver coming down. Silver is usually a little more volatile than gold. Silver took out the trend line and the $24 support level, remember, yesterday. Rallied back to it and then got rejected, and it's moving lower. But as I said, uh, you still have some pretty good support on both gold and silver below. Silver next support, uh, decent support, is about 23055 and we're still above that now. So if the euro can rally, or even if the euro... You know, will certainly help the euro to rally. Uh, sometimes silver, gold will do their own thing on a day-to-day -day basis. But you know, you're looking at the larger trends. You know, weeks, especially months, there's a very high correlation, positive correlation between the direction of gold and silver, uh, with the uh, euro. Okay, and this is Coco. Threw this one out as a trade idea yesterday, and I and I stated that uh, I could not make a screaming case to buy it. Uh, just a decent case. So, you know, tried to share you, you know, I share trade ideas. I do my best to not only share the idea, tell you why, and also share my conviction on it. So it broke down. Uh, again, it's not one that, you know, should be all in long or meaning or aggressively long. Never all in on one position. I say that metaphorically, but when I say all in, I mean as much as you might be comfortable with having, a you know, that piece of your pie, the pie in your portfolio, that little sliver into any one commodity like cocoa. With that being said, uh, I'll make it very simple. If you were only targeting T1 for a quick bounce, you know, that the uh, the idea was to take it off the 2517 support level, then you probably stopped out today because it's, uh, although that's a little more upside than the drop so far, it's it's certainly not. I like to use, uh, you know, not always, depends on the trade, but typically, generally, I like a 3 to 1 risk reward ratio, meaning I'll risk one unit of loss for every three units of profit potential. You know, you know, 10% drop for a 30% rally, for example. Uh, on this one, let me show you. If you're, you're going to give it some room, and um, I think there's a case to be made to give it some room, especially if you are targeting the final target. I laid out three targets, T1, T2 zone up here, it's a resistance zone, and T3. And let me just show you. So far, we've dropped about 2.18%, a little over 2%, uh, and the price target is about 8% if hit, uh, that uh, T3 level. So if you're targeting 8%, you can allow yourself right we're right about there so not much more room uh, to keep within a three to one risk reward ratio we're right about that right now it'd be about you know 2.3 or something like that uh, so we're close and uh, there's also you can see a little reaction right here as well uh, all in all I'm not crazy about it 
but we do still have the divergence. So this is it. We're really stretching the limits of where if you're only, again, you might be targeting much more than that. I just gave you some near-term targets. Uh, I didn't make that line equal. We have about equal lows on the RSI, still a higher low on the PPO, although the PPO is pointed lower. So bottom line, we need to turn up and turn up soon to keep this trade intact. Otherwise, you might want to let it go. Uh, I'm not happy with what I'm seeing on the uh, daily chart of NIB as well. NIB is the uh, ETN proxy if you want to trade uh, ETN instead. And remember, I had uh, this support line right here that we fell to yesterday, about 29.73, give or take. And that was the basis for going long. But as I said, we did recently put in a divergent high. There's reason number one, I can't make a screaming case to go long. Uh, number two, I don't have any type of anything even remotely resembling divergence. We wouldn't for a while. Uh, and number three, the PPO and the RSI, these moment, momentum indicators are heading lower. And so we just may possibly work our way down there. But you can see I have a lot of lines. There's a lot of support levels. And, you know, if you give it time, we've been working our way up this uptrend line and we just recently visited the uptrend line so all I'm trying to say is my near-term convictions aren't super strong um, and that's why you might not want to give it a you know if you're gonna if you're in it don't give it too much more room because if you go all the way to that trend line that's gonna be uh, another it's not huge I'm talking a couple percentage points probably at best but uh, what is that let me grab that bottom there depends when you get there it'd be about five yeah roughly five percent more downside there um and we are finally we are coming up on uh, oversold here it was oversold we're getting close to oversold here we got close but never touched it there you can see this is typical bull market action every time we pulled back the buyers have stepped in just before that 30 level on the rsi um and you tend to be overbought stay overbought for a while or become more overbought and again that's that's bull market action but again I mentioned this yesterday uh, of all the commodities out there including the ag commodities uh, this has not been one of the strongest ones but uh, you know maybe it'll play a game of catch up and then bigger picture yeah if it can take out that I gave you on the weekly chart that's what it was that big triangle pattern so that's it and there it is uh, that's cocoa all right, let's move on to bonds. We'll wrap it up. That's the last one, and I'll just stick with the five-year. Uh, that's ZF. Um, oh, and I have one other trade update I needed to cover. That's right. I wanted to do an update on LE or HE, uh, lean hogs. But uh, there it is. We hit that uh, 12, uh, 122.088 uh, resistance level again. So we've been hitting it here, here, hit it again. We need to pop that, and I think we will. Again, I can't rule out one other thrust down because if it does, it's going to keep the divergence uh, intact. Uh, a marginal new low anytime soon would guarantee to have these divergences intact if it's marginal. You know, if it tanks like that, no. Or if it took a long time to do so, the divergences could be burned off. But again, this is looking, uh, this is a constructive chart. And um, leaning this way, we can pop, hit that next target, 122, 144, and you can see the additional targets. And at this point in time, um, my max swing target, again, at this point in time is about 123. Uh, just to show you uh, the chart of uh, the five year, FVX dot uh, X. And uh, same thing, we're really close to the uh, that. 13-ish uh, resistance level right there and um, and starting to roll off it again we fell a little shy of it but again big divergence so that's where there's the potential for uh, even more downside if we break that move down to the 920 level and possibly even lower uh, last one uh, because I can't recall if I did an update on this I saw the target get hit the other day like I said I've had to you know yesterday I had to step away from the desk and that was HE lean hogs uh, that was uh, trade mention couple well that divergence was confirmed let me take that away edit commentary that was positive divergence confirmed divergent low right here just where we came at before right around there so that's also price support 
we rallied from there and then we set up an impulsive move that move took out the downtrend line the primary trend line set up in a little bull flag pattern there and then boom ripped out of that bull flag and hit my 77 262 target almost to the exact cent i can't even see right there it's not popping up tell me it looks looks to be almost a perfect tag of that and so that's it there's the typical reaction off the initial tag of that target and where we go from here near term hard to say um, we did put in that divergent low so my guess is it'll probably get another thrust up maybe I'll come in a back test uh, but your next objective long entry um, you might have an objective long entry on the back test but your next breakout is going to be above 77.262 and that uh, could take us up to that 81.45 ish anyway about 81.45 ish target okay let's wrap it up there this has been Randy Finney with right side of the chart have a great day